Hello everybody and you are very welcome to Successful Perspectives. Successful Perspectives of course is when we deep dive into the topic of leadership with a member from our very selective network Boardroom by Amir. For this conversation I am delighted to be joined by my friend Khalid Mohammed, who is the Vice President and General Manager for Middle East and Africa at Johnson Controls. Khalid, wonderful to have you on Successful Perspectives and thanks for sharing your time. Thank you, Trevor, and great to see you again, as always. Now, <clears throat> I have the great benefit, Khalid, of spending a little bit of time with you here and having a successful perspectives conversation. I get to pick your, pick your brains about, about leadership. So maybe we start off, and if you could describe to me how would you characterize your leadership philosophy? What are the main tenets as you see it? Yeah, okay, no, thank you for the question. Uh, if I am to summarize it, actually, I would say it will be based on three pillars. Uh, the ability to define clearly a purpose for the organization, for the team, for the function, rally people around it, and put the accountability in place. And I think it becomes a kind of the, the moving dreams of that. So purpose, rallying, and accountability. Yeah. That would be the framework of my philosophy. I love it. Do, do you get a chance to reflect much on your, your leadership philosophy and how it's developing and how it's evolving over the years? How, how do you think about that? How do you measure its success? What does that look like to you? It's, it's part of how we live our life actually at work so it has to be part of the culture to make it work uh, and and the way you measure it and it goes back to the first point which is the purpose is how much you achieving with the purpose that would be the main kind of way to measure success in that case so it has to be embedded within the culture and and how much you are achieving with the purpose is how you measure your success attaining to it when you think back over the course of, of your career, let's take a little step back. I know you're obviously a very young man, but let's just go back a little bit in, in time to when you're starting your, your career. Um, did you consider yourself a, a natural leader? Did you feel you had those traits in you? What, whatever that even means nowadays, a, a natural leader. But, but would you have felt that you were destined for the position that you ended up being over a large organization, overseeing a you know, a huge region in terms of Middle East and Africa. Do you feel that was an a natural inevitability or is it something your leadership, you had to grow into that possession, uh, position, you had to develop yourself into it? It's a good question, Trevor. You know, I mean, if I think about leadership, actually, I'm a strong believer that natural leadership is the only leadership. You cannot, I find it hard to create leader from scratch. So in my view, all leaders are natural leaders. What happens between you know, the start of it and, and as, as you grow and you, you start developing your career, it's, it's more into maturing your leadership style, building the experiences to enforce your leadership style and building all the tools that you need to lead organizations of different sizes. So you start with a small to medium to large, so it becomes a maturity type, you know, progress. But from the start, you're actually a natural leader. Now, what it makes a difference is when you have strong uh, uh, leadership around you that actually can see that and, and take it and nurture it to help you grow in those roles. But leadership is a natural thing in my view. Somebody said to me on, on one of our conversations, <clears throat> It isn't a case of being a natural leader, but you have to want to lead, right? It has to be in, inside you that you want to be a leader in the first place. Do you tie those two things together in, in, in that sense of, you know, you have to have that leadership trait inside of you. And ultimately that is a case of wanting to be a leader and then everything else around it can be molded and fixed and developed. Totally. I mean, they are very connected, and that's why it goes back to my initial 
kind of thought of like, it is natural and the two comes hand in hand. The two are very connected. You cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot push someone to be a leader if they don't want to be a leader. They are naturally and they want to do it by, by nature. And that's how it develops. What about if there's a, a team member on your team who you feel has what it takes to be a leader, but they're just unsure of themselves. And they're not, they're not basically sure if they are in the right, if they have the right characteristics to lead. What, what do you do there? I had it that actually I had that and I had another scenario where they're completely were clear that they do want to do it and I, I had to respect that. In the first case, uh, Trevor, where we had uh, somebody who wasn't sure, uh, we actually helped that individual to navigate and actually tend to be a, a, an amazing success story. So in those cases, you have to take the individual and you have to help and support and 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 help develop into that role because there will be a kind of element of fear that you have to remove but in other cases we had uh, i had personally uh, interacted in my organizations with uh, some individuals who i thought would be great leaders but they did not want to be on that space and i had to respect that and that's it and do you feel that is what, what you're talking about there kind of speaks to how even the modern definition of leadership is evolving quite a lot, right? Like 20 years ago, it was probably fair to say the leader was very much focused on the, the P&L and profitability and maximizing shareholder value. And now this definition of leadership, to your point, exactly what you described there in terms of nurturing talent, trying to you know, trying to bring people up, trying to bring people through. Now it's shifting to, of course, you have responsibility on, on the P&L and you have responsibility on profitability, but also you have a responsibility in terms of the type of culture that you're trying to create, which is exactly what you were alluding to there. And there's also now a greater impact in terms of the impact your organization has from a, from a social perspective. What, what's your take on all of that, how that is evolving and how you how do you look at that yeah it's leadership again Trevor I mean for me leadership is not only about BNL management or about organization management is the 360 of how you develop a culture how you develop an organization successful one by the way uh, and 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 it has to be it has to be focusing on all these elements of an organization. Uh, mm. So yeah, it's it's not it's not something that only has to do with the PNL of an organization. All aspects have to be looked at. What's the best piece of career advice that you've received that you would like to share with our audience? Be who you are. Don't try to be somebody else. I would say that's the best one actually, because who you are will actually prevail. Yeah, always. Yeah, I love it. Authenticity, right? <laughs> Be yep. yourself, everybody else is taken. Yeah. Yep. Khalid Mohammed of Johnson Controls, as always, great to see you. Thank you so much for sharing your pearls of wisdom. Trevor, thank you so much and great to see you again as well.